Perpetual Mommy here, back today to talk to you about how to secure your child within their child restraint when traveling rear-facing. So this information will pertain to infant-only carriers and children traveling rear-facing in their convertible seats. The only piece of information that would be different when talking about the convertible seat is that the convertible seat does not have a carry handle. This is an infant-only carrier. This is the one that I am going to be using today. This happens to be my daughter's uh, car seat that she's actually using, and she's on the floor next to me, so you may hear her every once in a while. Um, I'm not telling you this is the best car seat on the market. I'm not telling you that this is the safest or the one to purchase. This is just the one that I have that I'm using for my daughter and the one that we're going to go ahead and use for this video. If you have specific questions for me, go ahead and uh, put them below in the comments and I'll, get, I'll answer as many as I can. This video is not going to be about how to install the car seat in the vehicle. It is just about securing your child within their child restraint when traveling rear facing. Today is November 7th, 2015. Everything that I'm telling you is correct as of this date. That doesn't mean that tomorrow or two months from now something in this video may change and the information may have changed. Please, please, please do not use this video in substitution of reading your car seat manual. That is one piece of information that I want you, one piece of literature I want you to read from the very front to the very back, starting at the warning sections all the way through the end. What I tell parents and caregivers when they come to me for help with their car seats is that it is not enough for me to know your car seat manual inside and out. You need to know it. So please, please, please always, always, always read your manual before using your car seat. If you have any questions, contact the manufacturer. Make sure that you get answers to your questions. And at the end of this video, I will link some information for where you can go ahead in your area and get your car seat checked, either for free or for a nominal fee, depending on the service um, and look, uh, organizations that can help you answer any car seat questions that you may have. Uh, again, back to the manuals. I do want to show you guys, I have this printed out manual for two reasons. One is because my car seat manual was used for a car seat class that I taught to train technicians to be car seat instructor, or to, excuse me, to be car seat technicians, and I never got it back. Uh, and this is also to show you that you can print out every manual for every car seat on the internet. So if you've lost your manual, someone borrowed it and didn't give it back, that you can go ahead and print this off the internet. I am going to go ahead and try to talk really fast and get through this video pretty quickly. I don't want it to be too long. If I skip through anything again that you don't understand, please feel free to comment below and I'll answer as much as I can. I am not going to be answering car seat installation questions though. And again, I will link information for you to be able to get uh, help installing your car seat if you need that. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is that when a baby travels rear facing in their car seat, whether that's in an infant carrier or a convertible seat, the harness straps, these are your harness straps need to be at or below the shoulder blades. They need to be even with or below the shoulder blades coming up and over. And you wanna think about that like a roller coaster. So anytime we travel in a roller coaster that goes upside down, you pull those harnesses up and over your head and they come down below your shoulder blades. That's because in a car seat, the sole reason your baby travels rear facing is so that in a crash or a quick deceleration, there's no head neck excursion or force on the neck. So what's gonna happen is your car seat's gonna rock forward and it's gonna come back like this. And so what you want to do is hold baby down it in the seat. If the harness straps were above baby's shoulders, baby would slam up into the straps and come down. You don't want that. So again, the harness straps do need to be at or below the shoulder blades when traveling rear facing. That is very, very important. So again, even with or just below, never above rear facing, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and start by putting baby in the seat. Uh, I do want to talk to you about the inserts. So these inserts came with my car seat. Please, please, please do not add anything to your car seat or anything to your vehicle that did not come with your car seat or come with your vehicle. They're called aftermarket or non-regulated products. They avoid the safety warranty of your car seat, of your vehicle, or both depending on the product. And I will do a aftermarket or non-regulated product video at some point, hopefully here in the near future. But for this video, what you need to know is please don't add anything to your car seat or your vehicle that didn't come with your car seat or come with your vehicle. There are two exceptions to that. You will see those in this video. So the reason I wanted to show you these in my car seat is that these are two separate pieces. A lot of the times people think this is one unit. And this is why it's really important to read your car seat manual. So this has a height limit for use and this has a weight limit for use and so if your car seat did come with any kind of inserts or extras you want to make sure that you always know what the specifications for use are on those particular products to be safe so i'm going to go ahead and show you in here in my manual and this is one of the most common misuses with this seat this happens to be the kiko key fit 30. okay so this is an infant insert this part's the infant insert 
This is the head insert. They are different pieces. And I don't know if you guys can see this here, but it says to only use the newborn insert, which is this bottom piece down here, in the, when the harnesses are in the lowest setting, and only if the child weighs between 4 and 11 pounds. What that means is when the child does weigh 12 pounds or the harness straps need to come up to the next level, this bottom insert has to come out. That has nothing to do with the head insert. That is just the infant insert. So it's very important that you would know that. Then if you keep reading in this manual, it will tell you the head insert can be used with or without the newborn insert and that you never use the head support with harnesses and upper slots, okay? So what that means here, and you can see here, uh, fastener tabs must always connect through slots above the slots used for harness. The reason, again, I'm going over this, you guys, is it's really important that you understand every component of your car seat. So what you just read, or what I just read to you, says that the harness slots are here. Your head insert always has to be one slot above your harness slots. So my harness slot's here, the head insert's coming through the slot above. When my inserts are here, my, when my harness slots are here, my head insert would be through here. When my harness slots are at the top slot, because there's no slot above to put the head insert, it would come out, okay? So this has a weight limit, four to 11 pounds. This has a height limit. Again, it always has to be one slot above your harness slots. So when the harness, or the harness straps, when the harness strap comes to the top slot, it comes out because there's no longer a harness slot above to put the head, head pillow in, okay? So that's what that is. And again, the reason I just went over that is it's one of the examples of one of the misuses people use with their car seats. Again, only about 88% of people are using their car seats properly as far as how to secure the child within their car seat. Make sure, make sure, make sure you read your manual. So here's our little baby today. And when you put your baby in a car seat, you want to sit them in a full upright position just like they're seated in a chair. Okay, so full upright position just like baby seated in a chair. I'm just getting some of the excess out of the way. Now the first thing that I do, and there's no right or wrong here, is I buckle the crotch strap. Two solid clicks. Okay, and I keep my hand typically behind the buckle here, so that if I pinch something, I've pinched myself and not baby. Okay, and this baby's a little bit small for the seat. Then I clip my retainer clip together. Your retainer clip is one of the most important components of your car seat nationwide. It is one of the most misused. It belongs at armpit level or nipple line, however you want to remember that. Believe it or not, your newborn's nipples are in line with their armpit. So again, that's armpit level or nipple line. This is actually the last piece that I adjust on the car seat though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand here at the buckle. I'm going to pull the excess strap across baby's legs. Make sure baby's seated across baby's legs just like that. Then I'm going to push the retainer clip down. Push the retainer clip down. And the reason I do that is if I keep my retainer clip in position and I tighten the straps, I'm going to choke baby. Let's go ahead and remove baby's binky. Okay. So again, if I had it here and I want to tighten the straps, I would guillotine baby. So I don't want to do that. So again, I'm going to tighten here first. Just pull up across the legs. Pull down at the retainer clip. Then I'm going to put my finger at the top of the clavicle bone before I start to pull so I can feel how tight the straps are getting. When baby is tight enough, you should not be able to pinch the webbing easily up and down together like this. You will always be able to pinch like this. Okay, that's not the test. It's at the top of the clavicle bone or shoulder, and it's up and down like this. You should not easily, again, be able to do that. So again, my finger at the top of the clavicle bone, and I'm going to take here, and I'm going to pull, 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 pull. Pull, 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 pull. This is one of the hardest things for new parents to do is to make their babies tight enough in the car seat. And what I do tell parents is that babies came out of a very small area. It does no good to get your car seat in your car nice and tight if we're not securing their little bodies within the car seat. So again, nice and tight so you can't easily pinch the webbing up and down together. And then I'm just going to wiggle my retainer clip right into position. Okay. Again, armpit level or nipple line, just like that. Baby should be nice and secure. Consider it a snug hug. Nice, nice, nice and tight. You are going to tighten and loosen your baby every single time you put them in and out of the car seat. If I want to take baby out of the car seat like this, I'd have to stuff her out. She'd learn to hate her car seat. So always loosen it an inch or two. So what I'm going to do is push the button here, put my hand towards the back of the shallow seat, pull the webbing ever so slightly. Just loosen it about this much. And again, when I want to put her back in, I just buckle her all back up, snuggle her back in every single time. Okay, you guys. No jackets, no sweaters, no sweatshirts, no thick clothing of any kind in the car seat. I will say that to you again. No jackets, no sweaters, no sweatshirts, no thick clothing of any kind in the car seat. It adds compressible material. You think you have baby nice and tight and secure it within the restraint, and they, they're not. They can be ejected from that restraint. So please, please, please 
Never ever. One thin layer of clothing, buckle baby in. You can tuck whatever you want over top of baby once baby is buckled and secure, but not underneath the harness straps. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take baby out just like she was gonna come out. I'm gonna show you how I would secure her if I did not have the infant, uh, the infant insert and the head pillow, okay? If my car seat did not come with these items. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. So everything that I'm showing you is approved by NHTSA, the National Highway Traffic Administration. And those are the people that set the guidelines for everything in our car seat. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and get baby ready to go here. And what you'll notice when I remove the insert is that there's a big space between baby's crotch and the crotch strap. And we do want to fill that. Car seat's number one purpose is to protect the head, neck, and spine. Second purpose is to prevent ejection. So if I don't fill this space and we secure baby in here, she's eventually going to slip down like this, and the head, neck, and spine will no longer be supported and secure. So let's go ahead and you can use a washcloth, you can use a newborn diaper, size one diaper. You roll it up like a little burrito, just like this, and you're going to put it between the crotch and the crotch strap to fill that space and help baby sit in position. Again, when baby's in correct position in the car seat, they're seated in an upright position just like they're seated in a chair. Buckle my buckle down here just like normal. Buckle my retainer clip. Remember the first thing that I do is I put my hand here and I'm going to gather the excess across the legs, making the straps nice and tight across the hips, and I'm going to pull my retainer clip down just like this. Okay. Then I'm going to put my finger at the top of the clavicle bone and I'm going to pull, 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 pull. Pull, pull, pull until I get it snug enough. And remember, when the straps are tight enough, you should not easily be able to pinch the webbing up and down together at the top of the bone. And the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wiggle that retainer clip up right into position, armpit level, or nipple line. I'm going to pause this video now and go ahead and take care of my infant. Perpetual mommy, sorry about that. Uh, my two-month-old needed me, so I'm back. And we were talking about how to secure the child without the infant insert, so if your car seat came without them, um, how you could provide body support without having the inserts. Again, please don't buy aftermarket or non-regulated products to add to your car seat. This is what you would do. So we have the diaper or the washcloth at the crotch to help fill that space between the crotch strap and the crotch if we needed to, to help keep baby supported, head, neck, and spine aligned so they don't slip down. Now babies need support inside the car seat from the top of their ear through their hip bone. Top of their ear through their hip bone. They don't need anything up here. So that's extraneous. So all those rolls and everything that you see that are up here, that is doing baby no good. Again, top of the ear through the hip bone. So what you can do is take your receiving blankets, roll them. I'm gonna roll it up really fast so you can see it. Okay, rolled it up nice and tight, keeping the rolled portion away from baby's face. And you never put anything behind their back or under their bottom. So this is alongside baby's body. Again, rolled portions away from the face. So if baby turns her head, she's not going to breathe into the fold. Okay? Top of the ear through the hip bone, just like that. Second blanket. Going to do the same thing. Okay. Keeping the rolled portion away from baby's face. Giving her support from the top of her ear through her hip bone. Nothing behind the back or under the bottom. Just alongside baby's body, nice and secure. Now never, ever, ever do this to your baby, but the reason I'm gonna do this is so you can see how secure baby is, okay? Baby's nice and tight, baby's not going anywhere. Okay, this is called pre-crash positioning. She's secured, she's ready to go. So just pull it out. If you ever need to wash them, just wash your blankets and yeah, put new ones in there, clean them and put them back. People always want to know how long you offer uh, side body support for baby. You do that until baby has good head control. Some babies that's three weeks, some babies that's two months or longer. So until your baby has good head control, you don't want to wedge your baby into the car seat. Babies are fine falling asleep with their heads going side to side. What we worry about is when the head falls towards the chest and can compromise the airway. But side to side is fine. Okay, so now I'm going to take baby out and I'm going to put a larger baby in here so you can see what it would look like with a larger baby. So I'm just going to loosen the straps. Remember, every time we take baby out of the car seat, we are going to loosen her just a little bit so that she doesn't want to hate the car seat. I'm going to go ahead and pull her out right now. There you go. All right, we have our bigger baby right here. I'm going to go ahead and sit her down just like this. 
So you guys can see again how you took your baby in. Here we go. And for those of you who know, yes, this is one of those cabbage patches from the 80s. One of the originals. Where's Calvin? All right. And I'm going to show you here what you could do to pretend like this is a little washcloth rolled up. You don't want to use a diaper. It's a little bit thinner. You don't want to hyperextend the legs. So you don't want to put anything in there that's going to push the legs too far apart. Put that right between her crotch and the crotch strap, just like that. I'm going to keep my hand behind the buckle, so if I pinch something, I pinch myself. Just like that. I'm going to flip a retainer clip together. Okay. Starting at the lower hip area, go ahead and tighten across the legs, just like that. Okay. If you have a bib on your baby, you do want to go ahead and pull that up over the harness straps at this point. Finger at the top of the clavicle, clavicle bone, pull, pull, pull. Pull, 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 a little bit at a time until you can easily pinch that webbing together. I'm going to go ahead and wiggle my retainer clip into position. Again, armpit level and up a line. Okay. Put our bib back down if you want it. If you have a drooly baby, baby that's teething, just like that. And she probably wouldn't need support at the top of her, from the top of her ears through her hip bone. She probably has good head control at this point, but she still wasn't filling the space between her crotch and the crotch strap. So I went ahead and I put something there for her. Now, if this baby did not have head control, you could do the same thing that we did for the smaller baby. Okay. From the top of the ear through the hip bone. From the top of the ear through the hip bone, just like that, okay? Uh, babies fit in their car seat. You always want to know the height and the weight of the seat. This particular seat goes to 30 pounds. And the inches on this seat, you know what, I actually don't remember offhand, but it will tell me on the side of your seat. So if you can't remember, you always can look at the side of your car seat. They're mandated by law to have a sticker that tells you. So 4 to 30 pounds and below 30 inches. So on top of having to be between 4 and 30 pounds and having to be less than 30 inches or less, their head cannot be more than an inch from the top of the seat. So for here, that's about the top of the Kiko label, but they have to be within the shell of the seat. So if the head is more than, if there's not at least an inch between the top of the head and the top of the car seat, baby is too tall. Now this car seat does say baby has to be 30 inches or less, but if you have a baby that's very long in the torso and short in the leg, they're gonna fit very differently than a baby that's short in the torso and long in the leg. So you are concerned with seated height. So even though it gives us an overall inches, which you have to be aware of, you also have to be aware that two 26 inch children would fit very differently in this seat depending on how they're proportioned. So even if you're within that 30 inches, if baby's head, if they don't have at least an inch between the top of the head and the top of the car seat, they are too tall for this car seat. So um, my son out outgrew his car seat about 16 pounds and he was nowhere near uh, the length because his seated height was too high and he didn't have an inch of clearance between the top of his head and the top of the car seat. So you have to be watching for all of those things. So irregardless of how much, or not irregardless, regardless of your weight and your height limits of your car seat, that one inch always pertains. As I sit here right now, every infant seat that I know of wants to have at least an inch of clearance between the top of the head and the top of the shell of the seat. Uh, I believe that's it for me right now. Oh, the carry handle. I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the carry handle. You need to know what position your carry handle needs to be in in the car. And you will find this out by reading your instruction manual. If you have a car seat that says you cannot have the carry handle in an upright position, rear facing in your vehicle and you have it like this, this can be a lethal error. These have broken off. They have stabbed children. They've impaled them. Uh, they've broken off and been like shrapnel flying through the car. If your manual says it can be up in the car, you can have it up in the car. But if it says you cannot, you cannot. You need to find the approved position for the handle to be in. My particular car seat says it can be in any position. If, my car, if I come across a car seat where the handle could be in any position, I always put it back all the way. And that's for that rebound. In the beginning, I was telling you guys that the sole reason your baby rides rear facing is so that in a cra crash or a quick deceleration, the head, neck, and spine is fully supported because the car seat rocks or rebounds. So that means your car seat rocks again all the way forward against the back of your vehicle seat, comes all the way back down, and will come back down again. If the carry handle's up, the first thing that hits the back of the vehicle seat is the carry handle. But again, if your manual says that you can do it, you can. You need to know which positions are approved for travel in the vehicle with your infant-only carrier. If your baby's traveling or facing in a convertible seat, you don't need to worry about that because the convertible seats right now do not have carry handles. 
this again was a very quick video to talk about how to secure your child rear facing in their infant only or convertible seat. Please comment with uh, basic questions below. I will answer very specific technical questions. I will probably refer you back to your local Safe Kids organization or the NHTSA website only because I don't want this to become a car seat vlog. Um, I just want to go ahead and get a video out there for those of you that are visual learners so that even after you've read your manual for your car seat that you can go ahead and see what it would look like to properly secure a child within their infant carrier. I do encourage you all, if you have any questions about your car seat, to find your local Safe Kids Coalition and get your car seat uh, inspected for free. They should go over every aspect of your car seat and do a doll demonstration, that's what we call this. If your baby has not been born yet, um, they should do this with you so that you can practice hands-on with your car seat what it feels like to actually adjust your own particular car seat. This is Perpetual Mommy wishing you all a great day. Hope you're having a happy day and uh, talk to you later. Bye-bye.